Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start our next quest in the saga series, Flight to the Ford. Now you may recall in the last video we talked about trying to make a decision of which boons to use. I think overall the decision was Tireless Ranger should go on to Grimbjorn. That way he starts every game now with plus one defense. And the skilled healer here would go over to Sam Gamgee, so he has plus two health. And then if anything comes up where they have to defend, Sam at least has some, some health so he can soak some damage. So these are permanent. I'm never going to be able to move them from those heroes. If those heroes die, I don't get new boons. So it is what it is. So Sam and Grimbjorn can't die. <laughs> Frodo was gravely injured during the fight at Weathertop before the Nazgul retreated. Strider cannot understand the enemy's withdrawal until he examines Frodo's wound. The tip of the blade was broken off and is working its way toward its heart. Knowing that Frodo will eventually fade into the world of the ring race if he doesn't get to Rivendell in time, Strider leads the hobbits towards the hidden valley as fast as he can. But Frodo's wound slows them, and the Nazgul are in close pursuit. In the end, a race for the Ford of Bruinen will decide the fate of the ring. They have drawn off for the time being. But not far, I fear. They will come again another night if we cannot escape. They are only waiting because they think that their purpose is almost accomplished and that the ring cannot fly much further. Frodo has been gravely injured in the attack at Weathertop and will perish if his companions can't bring him to Rivendell in time. Strider leads the hobbits towards the Hidden Valley, anxiously listening for the sound of Black Riders. The road runs along the edge of the hill for many miles from the bridge to the Ford of Bruinia, but I have not yet thought how we shall cross that water. One river at a time. We shall be fortunate indeed if we do not find the last bridge held against us. We can see here we have a response actually from the campaign card, which is kind of cool. It's the first one that we've seen this with. It says here that after an enemy is declared as an attacker, you can shuffle the top card of the burden deck into the encounter deck to cancel that attack. I will tell you what that means in a second. Our setup here is to shuffle each burden card from the Flight of the Ford burden set into a deck, okay, into its own deck. Then attach Evil Wound to the Ring Bear. We will need to set Ford of Brunian and the Witch King, remember him last time, <laughs> aside out of play. Add the last bridge and one Fell Rider per player to the staging area and set the Ring Bear's life to 15. So this is going to be our countdown. If ever Frodo's life goes down to zero, we lose the game. We can see here that we cannot advance to the next stage of the quest until the last bridge is in the victory display. Also, at the end of the round, we have to reduce the ring bear's life by one. Frodo's life will be at 15 in health in total instead of his two, which is actually kind of nice because that would mean we only have two rounds. <laughs> but we have our 15 health here. At the end of each round, we'll reduce that by one. You can see here this hero cannot be healed, so we cannot heal Frodo with anything. When this attached hero would take any amount of damage, reduce the ring bear's life by an equal amount instead. In the staging area, we have two fell riders and the last bridge. So these fell riders, like normal, they cannot have non morgul attachments. While the fell riders in the staging area, it gains forced. At the beginning of the encounter phase, the first player must either reduce the ring bear's life by one or engage the fell rider. Yeah, so they're going to be coming on us pretty much right away. We also have the last bridge. Now this is immune to player card effects. X is equal to the number of players in the game, so that's a two. So right now we have six threat in the staging area. To travel to the last bridge, the first player must reveal the top card of the burden deck and resolve the card as if it was just revealed from the encounter deck. Unlike the last few plays of this game, I'm actually gonna have the Rohan deck be first player because I do not want the Hobbit deck having both Fell Riders on them right away, just in case something happens where Grimbjorn can't defend for them. So we're going to start with the Rohan deck, who has 30 threat. So heck, they would come to him anyways, because his threat is 30, and their engagement cost is 30. We have Gildor and Glorian, Grimbjorn the Old, and Elfhelm, as well as we have Frodo Baggins. Don't forget, we do have our Mr. Underhill that we can always use to help us. We also still have the Gandalf's Delay out, so we only get to draw five cards. So we have Dunedain Mark, we have Darrowine, we have Dunedain Warning, that's nice. We have a Westfold Horse Breeder, and we have Armored Destrier. Oh, this is going to make me keep this hand. I really need Armored Destrier. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Don't forget, we also get to keep this Boon card in the hand of the first player, which will be the Rohan deck. Our Hobbit deck consists of Merry, Sam, and Pippin, and we have a total of 20 threat to start with. 
We'll go ahead and draw five cards over here. We have Ent Draft, we have Silver Lamp, Fireside Song, Song of Travel, and a Tree Beard. Oh, that actually is a pretty good hand. So I think, wow, yeah, I think I'm going to hold on to that as well. We'll go ahead and start the round. We have Generated Resources, we'll draw a card for each deck, and we have Heed the Dream and another Dunedain Warning. Right now, our biggest problem is we don't have Steward of Gundor, but I do think this Armored Destrier was worth it to keep it, because he will, uh, Grimbeorn will be able to defend twice. He'll only be able to attack once because he needs more resources, but we'll go ahead and play Armored Destrier. We'll use Gildor's and Elfhelm's resources to put that onto Grimbeorn. For the Hobbit deck, the only card we're going to play is Song of Travel. We're going to play that onto Gildor and Glorian over on the Rohan deck, so he has a blue resource icon. We have a total of six threat in the staging area, so we're going to go ahead and spend three, two, and two for the questing phase, so three, four, five, six, seven from our Rohan deck. We'll add Mary for nine, Sam for 10, 11, 12, and Pippin for 13, 14. A total of 14 to the six in the staging area. We'll go ahead and start revealing cards. This first one is for the Rohan deck, and we have When Revealed. Return each engaged Nazgul enemy to the staging area. If no enemies were returned to the staging area by this effect, it gains search. Yeah, okay, that doesn't even count. This is still the Rohan deck's card. The Troll Camp. While the Troll Camp is the active location, each hero gets plus one willpower, plus one attack, and plus one shield. <laughs> Do you guys remember this? In the book, they go and see where they had the trolls from the Hobbit series. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> I like that. So, and that only adds one threat. So that's for the Rohan deck. And then this is for the Hobbit deck. We have one revealed. Each ally gets minus one willpower until the end of the round. Deal two damage to each ally with zero willpower. Oh, there are no allies out yet. So we're good. We quested for a total of 14. We have two, four, six, seven in the staging area. So that means we actually placed seven progress on the current quest card. That actually is totally awesome. We're already almost halfway through this first quest card. Okay, during the travel phase, I do think we're going to go to the, tra uh, the troll camp just because, come on, plus one willpower, plus one attack, and plus one defense, that's really going to help Grimbjorn. At the start of the encounter phase, we then have to use the forced effect. We either have to reduce Frodo's life for one for each of these, or we'll go ahead and have the first player engage him. We're definitely going to have the first player engage him. So the first player, which is the Rohan deck, will have both Fell Riders on him. We'll have both Fell Riders obtain a Shadow card. Let's go ahead and have this Fell Rider attack, and he does have a Shadow effect. Return the attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Oh... Now, I did forget to tell you guys, I, sh I was defending with Grimbjorn, obviously. So he's attacking for four. Grimbjorn has four uh, shield, so he doesn't take any damage. We can then spend one of his resources to go ahead and use his response. He negates two shield of the Fell Rider, which he has three here, and he'll do three points of damage. So he'll do a total of two damage to the Fell Rider. Unfortunately, though, this Fell Rider is going to jump back into the staging area. We'll then go ahead and exhaust the Armored Destrier so we can discard a Shadow card from a non-unique enemy. Let's see. Oh, this didn't even have an ability anyways. Bummer. <laughs> uh, and then we have Grimbjorn ready again to defend against that Fell Rider. He's got four shield. He attacks for four. We're good to go. But now, unfortunately, Grimbjorn is not able to attack that Fell Rider back. But I need to remember, we have the Troll Camp active. We have plus one attack. So that means we should have been able to do one more point of damage to that Fell Rider. This Fell Rider should now have half health already. <laughs> nice, Grimbjorn. That'll end this round, so we'll go ahead and increase Threat by 1 for the Rohan deck to 31, the Hobbit deck to 21. We will refresh and generate resources, and then we'll go ahead and each draw a card. And we have the Snowborn Scout and a Fireside Song. To start this round, I think it's time that we heed the dream. What do you guys think? <laughs> We're going to spend one resource from Pippin, his only one that he has, to go ahead and play this. Now, this says choose a player. That player searches the top five cards of their deck for a card, add it to this hand, and shuffles his deck. Then, the players as a group may spend three leadership to have that same player search their entire deck for another card and add it to this hand, and then shuffle their deck. So I'm looking for Steward of Gundor. I have enough resources here where if I cannot find it in the top five cards of the Rohan's deck, I can go ahead and just find it anywhere because of this card. But I'm really hoping it's in the top five. One, two, three, four. Come on, top five. 
and we don't have the steward of Gundor. Bummer. Okay, so I think we're going to grab, hmm, you know, I don't know. I kind of like this one, actually. Uh, yeah, so we're going to grab this one into our hand, and then we're going to spend three leadership. The Hobbit deck is being super generous, using two from Sam, and then we're using one from Elfhelm to go ahead and grab the Steward of Gundor out of this deck, which is awesome. Unfortunately, we won't be able to play it this round, but next round, Grimbjorn should be able to have that on him. The Hobbit deck isn't done. We're going to go ahead and play Treebeard. Now, you can see I have four resources. You might be going, how in the world do I have four resources? <laughs> well, I had two left for Mary, and then Frodo had two resources. You have to remember in the saga how useful neutral colored cards are because you can use Frodo's resources for that. So I have four here. I have this on here to remind myself he comes into play exhausted, but next round we're going to have a four attacker, three defense guy that generates one resource for Ent and cards. Pretty awesome. For our Rohan deck, we've already made one mistake, and that is Grimbjorn should have gotten another plus one damage because he has a mount on him. So I'm going to place one more point of damage on that Fell Rider. Okay, he already has four damage. He only needs two more. That's pretty good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to spend Gildor's one resource to play Dunedain Mark. So Grimbjorn now has a total of five damage that he does around. And you guys, I promise I am going to do better. I don't know what's going on with me. I am missing a couple other things here too. Frodo should have lost one health at the end of the first round. So he's now at 14 health instead of 15. Now though, we can quest after I've figured out everything. <laughs> so we're going to go with Frodo for two, Mary for two, Sam for three, and Pippin for two. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we right now only have four in the staging area. And you know, I think I'm going to add another five to that. So that means we're questing for a total of 14 compared to the four in the staging area. We'll reveal the first card, and we have another one of these treacheries. So each ally gets minus one willpower. Our only ally is Treebeard. He still has one willpower left, so he doesn't take any damage. Sweet. Then our second card, we have Pathless Country. We remember this one. Adds plus four quest uh, points while it's in the staging area. Just so if you put progress on it while it's in the staging area, it actually takes seven instead of three to get rid of it. Looking at this staging area, we have two, four, six compared to our 14 progress. That means we have a total of eight progress we get to place on our location and our quest card. And you know what? We have the troll camp active. So that means all of those characters that I quested with get plus one willpower. So I get to add to that one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more. Oh my gosh, we quested for 20. 20 compared to the six in the staging area. That means we get to place a total of 14 progress. Two to take care of this one. We do get a victory on that. And so that means we place a total of 12 progress here. Yeah, we totally should be fine. I think it is time that we're going to travel to the last bridge. As we can see with the last bridge, the first player must reveal the top card of the burden deck and resolve that card as if it were just revealed from the encounter deck to travel here. So we're going to have to reveal that card, and then all burden cards that I have ever seen have the word surge. So then we're going to have to reveal another card from the encounter deck. We'll go ahead and reveal the top burden card, and we have surge. I told you. <laughs> when revealed, the first player must either exhaust the ring bear or reveal the, an additional encounter card. Well, we can't exhaust the ring bear because guess what? He is already exhausted. So what that means is we have to reveal now two encounter cards, one for the surge and one for this one revealed. The first card that we have is, oh no, this one, pain assails him. I know this one. Reduce the ring bear's life by one. So we go from having 14 down to 13 health for Frodo. Then it says, uh, reduce the ring bear's questing attack and defense to zero until the end of the round so that totally makes sense not really going to affect him because we've already quested with him that's kind of nice our second one yeah i was assuming that was going to happen soon we have another ring wraith fortunately this is the 35 threat one so we don't technically have to engage him right now moving to the encounter phase we have this fell rider remember it's forced effect we have to decide either to reduce frodo's health by one or have it engage the first player I'm going to have it engage the Hobbit deck. The only advantage is, thanks to Pippin, we get to draw a card. So we have Song of Wisdom. That's nice. And Sam will be able to ready. We'll now go ahead and place Shadow cards. One on the Hobbit deck's 
uh, Nazgul and one on the Rohan Dex Nazgul. So we'll go ahead and exhaust Grimbjorn. He has four armor. Don't forget that. He's attacking for four. Oh, sweet. No shadow effect. Then we will spend the one Grimbjorn resource so he can do his ability because I think he should be able to kill him. He attacks for two, four, five, minus one, or minus two armor. So he's down to one armor. That means he does four points of damage. Yeah, that will kill this Nazgul. We'll then go ahead and exhaust Armor Destrier so that we can ready Grimbjorn for another attack. We'll exhaust him to defend. He's got his four shield. This guy's attacking for four. No shadow effect. So uh, no one can attack over here, though. <laughs> so I think at the end of that, we're just going to be done with the round. With the end of the round, we'll go ahead and move Frodo's health all the way down to 12. We're still doing okay, but it always goes too fast. The Hobbit Dex Threat will move up to 22, and the Rohan's Dex Threat will move up to 32. We have now generated resources, and let's go ahead and have each deck draw a card. Oh yes, um, Elrond's Council and the Song of Kings. I think we all know what our Rohan deck will be doing. <laughs> Spending two leadership resources, getting Steward of Gondor, immediately exhausting it, so Grimbjorn now has three resources. For the Hobbit deck, we're going to go ahead and play Song of Wisdom on Tamari. Currently, it's not going to do anything, but you can imagine I'm going to try and get Fireside Song on him as soon as I can. Now, I could put Song of Kings on Mary, but having that additional defense for Grimbjorn and making his resource leadership, I think we all understand is really beneficial. So we're going to put this actually on Grimbjorn. Grimbjorn will then generate another defense because he has a mount. Then we're going to use Treebeard's one resource to play Ent Draft, and we're also going to put that on Grimbjorn. We're just going to power him up. This means he'll be a 5 attack, 5 defense, 7 health, who can ready with the armored Destrier. For questing this round, we'll go ahead and send Gildor for 3, Elfhelm for 2, a total of 5, and then add 2 more with Frodo for 7. We'll then add Pippin for 9, and Sam for uh, 10, 11, 12. We only have 5 in the staging area. And you know what? After thinking about it, I think I am going to send Mary to make a total of 14. I really don't want to get stuck at the last bridge. This first card is for the Rohan deck, and we have the Enten Moors. While Enten Moors is the active location, do not deal Nazgul enemies a shadow card during the combat phase. Ooh. After any amount of progress is placed on Enten Moors, reduce the Ring Bear's life by one. Ooh, double ouch. Hmm. That's kind of nice, but that has a really mean effect. We'll go ahead and uh, put that in the staging area, and we have, of course, another Nazgul. Well, they're all starting to show up. <laughs> we have now three Nazgul out, so uh, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's compared to our total of 14 that we quested with. Wow, that was just enough. Wow, I was not expecting it to be that close. 14 to 10 means we place exactly four progress and complete the last bridge. That's a victory card, so that goes out in the victory display. Now we've completed this quest card. Black horses leaped down the hill in pursuit, and from the riders came a terrible cry such as Frodo had heard, filling the woods with horror in the east farthing far away. It was answered, and to the dismay of Frodo and his friends, out from the trees and rocks away on the left, four other riders came flying. Two rode towards Frodo, two galloped madly towards the ford to cut off his escape. When revealed, add Ford of Bruinian and the Witch King to the staging area. Wonderful! <laughs> While at least one Nazgul enemy is in play, Race to Rivendell gets plus 15 quest points. And then, of course, we have our same thing. At the end of the round, reduce the Ring Bear's life by one. As long as we can progress through this, which right now is 30 because we have three blasted. Actually, now we're going to have four Ring Race out. Oh, man, you guys, I might have uh, gotten myself overwhelmed here. We have four of them with, uh, out on the board. Because of that, we need 30 quest points. Here we have the Ford of Bruinian, and we have our Witch King. We remember our Witch King. Poor Grimbjorn cannot defend against him. That was why I was so happy I got Treebeard out, because Treebeard at least can defend against the Witch King. <laughs> we do have the Ford of Bruinian here too. Now this is immune to player card effects. After the Ford of Bruinian leaves play as an explored location, all engaged enemies are discarded. All engaged enemies are discarded. Should I repeat that again? All. <laughs> that is... I know that here on the Witch King, it says immune to player card effects. This is an encounter card. So this Ford can actually discard the Witch King. Now, if anybody tells me this game is not thematic, 
just look at this. Do you guys remember this in the book or in the movie? This is when the Nazgul start running across the water, and then all of a sudden, that huge water flow comes and washes away all the Nazgul. <laughs> so that's what I'm hoping I can do. I right now have four Nazgul out. If I can figure out how to get them all engaged with me, not that I really want that, but if I can, and then I make sure I travel through the Fort of Brynion, they'd all get discarded. With that being said, I am not prepared for that yet. <laughs> I think I'm going to do the Entenmuros for my active location this round. This means, though, no shadow cards are going to be dealt to any of the Nazgul enemies, which is all that's on the board right now. Here we have the three enemies that are out in the staging area, two of the Ring Race and one of the Witch King. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the Hobbit deck, because their threat's only at 22, optionally engage this Ring Wraith. Now, our Rohan deck is only at 32 threat. The One Ring is not exhausted, so we don't have to worry about the 45 threat of the Witch King. I think I'm going to leave him out in the staging area, and this round, just go ahead and have the Hobbit deck optionally engage a Ring Wraith. That's going to ready Sam, and they can draw a card. Oh, fast hitch. That is sweet. Moving from the encounter phase to the combat phase, we're going to go ahead and have this Fell Rider attack. He'll attack Grimbjorn. We don't have any shadow cards, thanks to the Etten Moors. Grimbjorn will exhaust to defend. He has five defense to the four attack. Doesn't do anything to him. We'll spend one of his resources. He attacks for five, two, four, five, minus one shield. He does four points of damage to this Fell Rider. Can't kill him, but we're getting close. Then we'll go ahead and use our uh, armor Destrier, because I need to remember to use that, <laughs> so that he is ready now, and he can defend against that Ring Wraith over on the Hobbit side. We'll have this Nazgul attack. We'll go ahead and use Grimbjorn. He attacks for five, but Grimbjorn has five defense. Doesn't hurt him. Grimbjorn will spend that one resource and deal a total of five points of damage. This guy's got two armor still. So he'll only take three points of damage. So we can't kill him yet either. But we are damaging them. But I'm really just trying to get enough engaged with us to make it worth it to go to the Fort of Berenian. However, since Sam is ready, Sam can attack for two and Treebeard can attack for four. Oh my gosh. These two can actually take that Ring Wraith out because Treebeard can attack for four. Plus two is six. Four here for his four shield, plus two. That's the total of five. <laughs> awesome. Those two just took out a ring wraith. I was not expecting that. <laughs> we'll go ahead then and end the round, and we will take one damage off of Frodo. Frodo has 11 health left, you guys. Let's generate some resources. Oh, and increased threat. 33 over here for the Rohan deck, and 23 for the Hobbit deck. We have generated resources. Let's go ahead and draw a card. And we have Dunedain Mark, Sweet, and Master of the Forge. 